After the Second World War, Western Europe found itself in a moral abyss. How could something like this have happened? The Western Europeans said to themselves, never again. And in order to prevent a catastrophe like this from happening ever again, they drew two conclusions. The first one being that the nation state must be dismantled and that international organizations such as the European Coal and Steel Community and NATO just weren't enough. The nation state is evil because what was Nazi Germany other than just a sovereign nation state that used its right to self-determination? What were the Germans during that time period other than just voters who voted for the wrong candidate? If national independence can lead to concentration camps, then we must bring the nation states of Europe under control. Control. The second conclusion that they drew is that the right to rule should therefore not be derived from a democratic election, but instead from some kind of expertise. Because voters are stupid, sooner or later they will just elect some other dictator anyway. We need to make sure that the real power is not in the hands of the elected representatives of the nation states, but instead in the hands of a group of really good and decent people, who are highly educated and skilled, because they will know what is right. And today, about 75 years after the end of the Second World War, Europe can quite accurately be described as a technocracy. A technocracy is a system of governance in which the decision-making power in certain areas is in the hands of those who are considered to be experts in these respective areas. So the people who are in charge are quote-unquote experts. They studied their respective area of expertise at a university and have accumulated an amount of working experience. And therefore you actually might think that to any reasonable person it actually sounds like a good idea. Because if you could choose, would you prefer to have society run by some stupid comedian who is good at public speaking and who won an election like that? Or would you prefer to have society run by a group of very capable experts who know what they're doing? It sounds very rational and wise to choose the group of experts over the comedian. In reality however the situation is a bit more complex than that. Let's really get to the core of this. What is better? Is it better to have the world run by free and independent nation states? Or would it be better to have the world run by a group of experts? It basically all comes down to the following question. Would it be the best for the entire world if some very smart and good people were to come up with a set of universal laws and would then force everybody to live according to these laws? The technocrats at the EU and the UN would answer this question by saying, look, we are very smart and good people. If you let us rule over you, it would be the best for the whole world. Never again would there be war, conflict or hatred. However, if you then look at this same question from the perspective of, for example, the Poles, the Polish people, it suddenly is the most worrisome idea there is. Because the Poles see themselves as a unique people who have their own moral framework to distinguish between good and bad. Their own understanding of history, their own understanding of their own place in history and they want to be a free and independent people and develop themselves in their own homeland in their own unique way and their ancestors even gave their lives for that independence so they would look at this very same question and say no go away we rule ourselves but who has it right the technocrats in brussels and geneva or the poles according to the technocrats the poles are nothing more than potential fascists because what was Nazi Germany other than just an independent nation state? Independent Poland could become like Nazi Germany was. And according to the Poles, on the other hand, the technocrats are nothing more than potential communists. Because what else was the Soviet Union other than just another universalist empire ruled by a bunch of technocrats who believed that they had all the answers? The technocrats could radicalize and become like the Soviets were. And let's face it, both of these perspectives that both of these groups have of one another could potentially be true. A radicalized nation could potentially elect a dictator and a radicalized class of technocrats could potentially turn into a group of dictators themselves. And of course it goes without saying that both of these extremes are undesirable. But where is Europe as a whole today in the year 2020?
Let's say that there exists a continuum with on one side the nation that elects a dictator and on the other side the technocrats that become dictators themselves. And let's think about where Europe right now in the year 2020 is on this continuum. I say that we are not on one of the edges but that we're also not somewhere in the middle. I say that we are about here, getting closer towards the technocratic dictatorship. Because sovereignty has been transferred for a very large part to the European Union and to the United Nations and we are dealing with activist judges who are suddenly making the decisions even though nobody elected them. And this movement in the direction of turning into a technocratic empire is being done based on the assumption that a Europe of free and independent nations is dangerous. And therefore it is believed that technocrats should be making the decisions in order to benefit all of humanity. But is this fear of the free nation justified and is the current technocratic situation of Europe really such a good idea in itself? Let's go back to the two conclusions that were drawn after World War II. These two conclusions being deeply ingrained into the mentality of the Western European peoples led towards the gradual development of an international class of ruling technocrats. They are working for the EU, for the UN, for the IMF and for other international organizations. They view the world in terms of numbers, averages and percentages and all of them are quote unquote experts. They are not elected, they cannot be removed by the democratic vote and therefore they do not really represent any European nation. They basically have no justification to rule other than their expertise. So instead of claiming to represent the people, they often claim to represent reason and facts and science. Their attitude is that they do what is the best for everyone or perhaps even for the entire world. They are often referred to as ruthless because they feel detached from the nation that they were born. And because of this they are often experienced in the Western European psyche as having some kind of moral authority. Because they, the technocrats, are not nationalistic and therefore will not do evil. The catastrophes of the 20th century are believed to have been caused by nations and nationalism. So a person who does not care about his nation, feels detached from his nation and therefore is not nationalistic, would be incapable of doing evil. A technocrat might have been born in Germany but because he does not care about Germany nor about his fellow Germans more than he cares about some distant faraway people with whom he has nothing in common he is a good and moral person because he is as far away from being nationalistic as possible and therefore he embodies both pure reason and pure goodness he is the ultimate product of the post World War II Europe and according to the worldview of this class of ruthless cosmopolitan worldly technocrats, Brexit is the most scary thing they have ever witnessed. To them, a nation declaring its independence is something terrible. Because if they, the experts, let these Brits decide for themselves what they will do, they could just do whatever they want. Perhaps they will even elect a dictator who will blow up the entire world or something like that. And the technocrats are actually right. Because who knows, perhaps the British will indeed to do something like that. Who knows? But is this fear really that reasonable? The truth is that a nation that declares its independence is like a human being that is born. He or she indeed has the potential to become a mass murderer, who will go down in history as Al Capone, one of the worst criminals who ever lived. He or she also has the potential to become the best athlete, the best musician, the best motivational speaker inspiring millions of people to better their lives, the best actor, the best scientist, or just an amazing grandfather or grandmother. He or she could potentially go down in history as Isaac Newton. Between the years 1618 and 1648, the Thirty Years' War took place in Europe. The peoples of Europe rose up against the universalist German and Spanish Catholic empires because they wanted to rule themselves independently. Every nation was unique, each having a slightly different constitution, a different view of the world. The Dutch constitution was unique, the English constitution was unique and all of these nations could become shining examples or terrible disasters. All of them had the potential to become Al Capones or Isaac Newtons. Much later, the American Americans declared their independence. They too had a different constitution which viewed the world differently. And each and every one of their states 
also had a different constitution. The modern day that we live in right now is the result of the free competition between all of these free western nations in the area of technology, science and political thought. This is the case because rational and common sense people or nations would like to copy and compete with the Isaac Newtons and would like to avoid becoming like the Al Capones because free peoples will choose happiness over suffering. Free and independent nations like to copy from one another what works and not copy from one another what doesn't work. So when the Poles look at the Germans of today, they would like to copy the German industry, the German free universities and perhaps the German welfare state. In that sense they would like to be more like the Germans. What they do not want to copy is multiculturalism, mass migration and Islamization. Because that leads to a decrease of social cohesion, social trust and free speech and an increase of rape, crime, terror attacks and so on. Simultaneously the Poles realize that their population is declining and that it would be the best to have a slightly growing population. But they do not want to grow the population in their country through mass migration of non-westerners. So they have allowed many Ukrainians to come in with whom they share a similar cultural background. In addition the Poles are now trying to raise their own natural fertility rates. And the Hungarians too have looked at how the other nations of Europe are doing and have drawn a similar conclusion as the Poles have and they too are looking for ways to increase their own fertility rate. So to make a long story short, independent and free nations learn from one another, copy what works and avoid what doesn't work. This is nothing new. The American Declaration of Independence was very much based on the Dutch Declaration of Independence. So the technocrats at the EU and the UN are saying the less independent nation states the better for the entire world. What they do not understand however is that an independent and free nation has intrinsic value as an infinite range of possibilities. Each nation being unique, being allowed to develop itself in their own unique way can turn its homeland into an amazing place in the world and an inspiration for all the other nations. And therefore the more independent and free nations, the better for the entire world. This doesn't mean however that international organizations must all be abolished. Every rational person would agree that international organizations that representatives of nations can go to for resolving conflicts about resources or territory are a good idea. Trade deals and multinational organizations can be very useful, good and beneficial, as long as they don't turn into governing entities. So is it perhaps the case then that the world of independent nations can work even though there exists a certain amount of risk? And in that case perhaps a technocracy would be a better idea anyway. Because in that case perhaps there is no risk. Because these people are well experts, right? But is it really? The idea that the world should be ruled by technocrats is deeply flawed if you actually look at it more closely. Firstly, because the technocrat with all of his expertise still does not have all the information and the range of perspectives that he needs in order to make the right decision. Secondly, there actually isn't a reason to believe that he is as morally pure and good as the western Europeans assume nowadays. The technocratic class does not have all the information because the world, which consists of a grand diversity of nations, each having their own history, needs and problems, is way too complex for any group of people to really understand. What can work for Germany can turn out to be a disaster for Spain. For example, there are a lot of quote unquote experts in Europe who thought that they knew everything about the economy. And their life's work is the Euro, which turned out to be a disaster for Sutter. Europe. And even 12 years after the economic crisis of 2008, these technocrats, with all of their quote-unquote expertise, still don't know how to fix the situation. They do not know how to manage the difference between Northern European economies and the Southern European economies. And integration of both into one currency has been a disaster. But do not think that the groups of experts can only be wrong in very complex international situations, because they can also be wrong on a national level. For example, the experts from the universities in Sweden thought that they could turn their country into a multicultural paradise. All of them were experts and all of their papers and academic researches have been peer reviewed and according to the academic method. They were taken seriously by the media and by the Swedish people, which is something that deserves a totally separate video in itself. But the point now is that they turned out to be incorrect. Even though Sweden, a relatively small and homogeneous
homogeneous population of about 8 million Swedes isn't nearly as complex as the entire European continent. And this failure of so-called experts isn't unique to the European continent. In the United States, experts in the area of international relations thought that if they would allow China to access international trade organizations, that China would automatically turn into a Western democracy. And different American experts in the area of the Middle East thought that if they would remove Saddam Hussein from power, that Iraq would rapidly turn into a Western democracy. In 2001, the experts of the United Nations came with a paper called Replacement Migration. Is it a solution to declining and aging populations? And the technocrats in Brussels, Strasbourg and Geneva thought it was a great idea. Because if you view the world in terms of numbers and percentages, it all makes sense. National debt, GDP, average income, a declining population, doesn't look good, Europe needs more people. The solution? In other parts of the world there are more people. So let's Let's move those people from the other part of the world to Europe and everyone benefits. What a smart solution. Good for the entire world, they thought. However, it turned out to be a disaster, because it turned out that their calculations were very smart and intelligent, but that they had forgotten about this little thing called human nature. And if you control F, their very intelligent papers for words like social cohesion or social trust or tribalism or Islam, you will consistently get zero results. And today, 19 years after this paper, it is safe to say that Western Europe will never be the same again. And in some countries, it is a matter of time until things get out of hand in a way that could potentially make the Serbia-Kosovo conflict blush. So the ruthless technocrats with all of their expertise can make terrible mistakes which can lead to terrible disasters. Will they be held responsible? No. Can you send them away? No, because they were unelected in the first place. So the idea that technocrats know what to do just because they are licensed experts at something is ridiculous. The world, humanity, is too complex to be overseen by a centralized group of experts. And therefore decentralization is much better for dealing with a complex world than centralization. And decentralization at a European level basically translates to giving the decision making power back to the nation states. In addition, the cosmopolitan technocrat really is not as morally pure as is often assumed by most people in Western Europe. Just because a technocrat isn't nationalistic doesn't mean that he can't do evil. I am not talking about unintended evils, such as the consequences of the euro for southern Europe, but also about intended evils. Because how do you really know that the class of technocrats can't become hateful, for example towards Brexiteers, or towards the Poles, or towards the Hungarians? They have been trying very hard to declare the Brexit vote as illegitimate by arguing that the people who voted were uninformed and by arguing that the world is too complex for these voters to understand what is good for them. And how do you know that the technocrats from Western Europe can't look down with contempt on the more conservative nations of Eastern Europe? How do you know that the technocrats from Germany don't intensely hate the Italians for liking Salvini? How do you know that the lack of loyalty towards their own nation isn't a hint endurance instead of a strength. Because how can they do the right thing if they don't really care that much about the peoples of Europe? And how can we even know that some of these technocrats aren't damaging the European civilization on purpose? Especially those technocrats who are from countries like Germany or the Netherlands. Because too many of them actually have a quite hateful attitude towards European civilization and towards the Western world in general. How do you know that if the technocratic class in the EU was given the power over over a European army, they wouldn't send it to Budapest to enforce their so-called European values with force. Of course they would do it in the name of reason and science and human rights. But if it really comes down to it, are these technocrats really that different from the type of people who ruled the Soviet Union? Because the Soviet Union was also ruled by people who were considered to be highly skilled. In 1986, nearly 89% of Politburo members were engineers. 
So the idea that a free, independent nation can potentially represent a huge danger to all of humanity, but that a class of ruthless cosmopolitan technocrats cannot, just because they're experts who are not nationalistic, is completely ridiculous. A free and independent nation electing a dictator could potentially pose a threat to all of humanity. But so can a class of cosmopolitan ruthless technocrats. The elected dictator at least can be removed by the nation, assuming that democracy still functions. The class of EU and UN technocrats was never elected in the first place and cannot be removed by the vote at all. In Western Europe, many people today believe that having the continent ruled by a class of international experts is something that common sense educated decent people should support, because national independence is believed to have lost its legitimacy during the Second World War. This idea is very much alive in Western Europe. I think that this idea is also completely wrong, and also that it is actually a new form of imperialism, of which the consequences will be very, very bad. It is based on two false assumptions that were drawn after the Second World War, and the class of technocrats that has been created as a result of it do not know what they're doing, because humanity, and even Europe as a diverse continent consisting of many different unique nations, is way too complex. Going back to the continuum I showed earlier, we should try to move Europe back towards the middle of it. When I look at these United Nations rooms filled with all of these mandate holders and experts and commissioners and what have you, I see a room filled with delusional career people and activists who think they know everything and who exist in a cosmopolitan bubble which is completely separate from the reality outside on the streets of an average European city. The powers they currently hold should be brought back to the level of the nation states, the decisions that they make should be taken away from them and given to the nations of Europe, preferably in the form of a referenda, the organizations that they belong to should be dismantled and declared illegitimate and we should then build a pink fence around them and call it Fluffy Fun Park and the entrance fee of this park should be free for irregular migrants. Thanks for listening and have a nice day. If you like this type of content, please subscribe to my channel. Also feel free to check out my book, How to Debate the Left on Islam.